What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Waterboy Podcast. Today, it is episode number 46. 46. We're four away from 50. Week one NFL preview, Everett. We got a lot to go over today, and we don't have a lot of time. Me and uh, Everett. A lot to go through, not a lot of time. Me and Everett are crunching this in a time frame. Uh, I, I had some things. Uh, I, I just have one quick non-NFL thing, the only non-NFL thing that I want you to react to, Everett. Okay. Vi- I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher this name, so I don't care. Roast me. Victor Wenbinyama. Probably got that wrong. The French basketball prospect who is projected to go number one in the draft next year. They, uh, they measured uh, his like weight, height, uh, his like pre-draft like measurements or whatever. He is seven foot four without shoes, and he has an eight foot wingspan. He has the Chet Holmgren build, except he weighs 20 pounds more than Chet, allegedly. He's at a mighty 210 when Chet was apparently 190. So keep that in mind, a little bit bigger. A lot of people are just saying like, I've seen like short little clips of him just like whapping threes pulling up like right. doing right. iso sh- like he's wet like he yeah, is he handles french, right? he's french yeah this french guy he's projected to go number one i've been hearing about this guy for like years now but th- that's all i had non-nfl i was i just want to point out that the new number one projected uh pick is seven foot four without shoes has an eight foot wingspan and he's what? like kevin durant <laughs> yeah. um that's all I had, though, about that. I, I mean, NFL, we'll, so. we'll get into more of that when <laughs> after the NBA comes around, but it's just absurd. Well, how, I doubt we'll really be covering the NBA not really. that hard. But anyway. it is absurd how <laughs> genetically gifted uh, that guy that guy is. That's all I had, though. We're not going to waste any more time on that. That's just something yeah. I saw today. I was like, what the hell? But Yeah, okay. uh, actually, one more thing. One more thing okay. that I okay. – um, unrelated to the NFL um, – since Craig Kimbrell has changed his walkout song to let it go, he has had six appearances, no hits, no runs. He boasts a 0.00 ERA, so a little round over that stretch. Uh, maybe maybe Adina Menzel let it go is all we need. And I'll be honest, when I first saw that post the other day, my first thought was, oh, let it go. That's what the Dodger front office will do to Craig Kimbrell in the offseason. But, hey, if he picks it, it okay. Let me say, if Craig Kimbrell shuts this shit down in the postseason and helps the Dodgers win a ring, all is forgiven. All yeah. is forgiven. You know, the, it, like I mean, the right who cares? I, I'm not confident he'll do that, but no. if he but does, who, all who is cares, forgotten. Who cares about the regular season if you win the chip? I certainly exactly. Do. No, no, no. Exactly. Like if he shows up in the playoffs, he can redeem himself. Uh, now. It's, it's kind of funny, though. I think it works in the psyche of the Dodgers having him walk in to let it go. The other team's hitters are sitting there like, what the fuck is going on? Whereas when you're playing against the Mets and the trumpets start blaring, you're like, okay, we're about to smack the shit out of Diaz. Fuck this song. We're about to rock his ass. Like, yeah. I don't know. Maybe when let it go is playing the other team, when they're about to hit, they're like, all right, this is kind of funny. <laughs> like, this like, is kind of humor. <laughs> like, but, like he, he knows. He knows. And, and yeah, no, like apparently when it was, uh, I think, it, I forget what, what maybe it was for like Mother's Day or something. That was a while ago. But they, they, they had like a maybe a national girlfriend or wife's day where all the players, uh, like girlfriends or wives, pick their song. And so Craig Kimball's wife picked Let It Go. And ever since then, he hasn't given up a hit. So he just kept it. I mean, that's and like that's, that's why, but shit, keep it, brother keep that craig because i haven't heard a thing about you in a minute and that's a very good thing maybe his <laughs> wife was on to something yeah maybe 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 his wife knew some secrets about craig maybe craig's just a little softy at heart and he can't be walking out to a sweet child of mine anymore he needs to be walking out to let it go uh yeah but but honestly i love that point that i was like shit whatever works man i don't care do whatever, whatever it takes, man. If I whatever it takes. If I don't ever see you give up two runs again in the ninth inning, it will never be soon enough. Like, uh, like I don't even care if you load the base as long as you just don't give up runs. That's all that I care about, man. But uh, yeah, let's get into some NFL Week One preview now. Sorry for boring you guys. Okay, first things first. 
We're recording this on Wednesday, day before, but it's Thursday when you guys are watching this. So we got to start off with Thursday night football. First game of the NFL season, the Buffalo Bills are going on the road, taking on the defending Super Bowl champs in the Los Angeles Rams in SoFi Stadium. Everett, what do you think will happen in this Buffalo LA Rams game? Look, I, I, I personally think that the Rams, obviously the Rams are stacked. Like they, they revamped their defense. Obviously they went Von Miller, but they got Bobby, um, Bobby Wagner. Wagner. Right. Yeah. I said Bobby Miller, um, <laughs> the pitcher. Dodgers, uh, man. You're thinking about it too much. But I, I think that all season, I think that the Bills, like this is their year. And I know we've said that the last two years, but I genuinely and get- I think we also, I think we also gave out, I, I've been saying Bills are a lock to go to the AFC championship game at the minimum all year. I think, I think that the Bills, Stefan Diggs, Gabriel Davis, by the way, if you remember, I think he had two 12, three touchdowns in that. It was like four. It was a lot. Touchdowns. It was nuts. I think James, I, I think that obviously Devin Singletary is going to start the game off as a running back, but by the end of the season, James Cook is going to be. I expect, I expect James Cook to and, take over eventually. And I think that once that happens, Fresh it's going to be running back. Gonna be a, there's going to be a star contrast, and I think he's their running back in the future. And I think with all those pieces, Plus, obviously, their defense is stacked. They don't have Trey White to start the season, which might be a problem going oh, yeah. against uh, Rams for Allen Robinson and um, Cooper Cup. So the secondary might be a little bit problematic. We might see some exposure. I, I did not. I did not think about that. I will. But not. with that, with that being said, I do think that the Bills are still going to inch out a win in this one. I think it's going to be a close game. I think we're going to see points in probably the high twenties, uh, mid to high twenties. But I think that the Bills are gonna gonna kind of squeak out this one. Josh Allen's gonna be put on, put on a great performance. Uh, Stephon Diggs gonna do well. Running games gonna be kind of rotationary, but it's gonna do well for the Rams. You got to keep in mind that Matthew Stafford. Uh, I think he has some problem with his shoulder going on right now. Yeah, mm-hmm. play all off season. Everyone, that's like all I, like in our fantasy draft the other day. I, I had a ton of people like I was like, damn, Stafford's still here in like round fourteen. Yeah, I told you it's an injury, and I was like, oh yeah, shit, that like, damn, I guess that shoulder's really bothering people. But like, I mean, I'm not too concerned about it. To be completely, I'm not too overly concerned. No, I wouldn't. I, but as week one, but shoulder injury is never a good sign for like a 33 year old quarterback, and it's a quarterback, so more specifically, in his throwing arm. Yeah. Uh. With that being said, though, I, I still I, I'm gonna give this to the Buffalo Bills as well. Uh, I I just think this Super Bowl hangover might might last a little while. Sean McVay all off season. Like remember after the draft when like the Patriots drafted Cole Strange and him and uh, uh, Les Snead were just like sitting there like drunk, laughing their ass off, like doing their live draft room. It's like I don't think the Rams have been taking this off season like that seriously. Like, I remember the offseason before the Super Bowl this year, they were also in their, like, Malibu drafting house and whatever. But I don't know. I Maybe maybe this has gone to Sean McVay. I, I would be shocked if the Rams could repeat what they did last year and make another Super Bowl push. I, I'd be shocked if it happens. I think, yeah. but uh, give, me, give me Bills week one. That's all I got. Also, just because both of these teams open up week one Thursday night, I'm taking both the Bills and the Rams next week, no matter what, with the long week. I, I don't care. I'll know who they're playing. Lock that in now. Bills and Rams are both winning week two because they have, I don't um, know, 10 days of re- uh, week practice. Two, week two, just to clarify, week two, the Rams play the Falcons and the Bills. The, the Bills have a bye week? No, that can't be right. It's week two. That can't be right. The Bills. That cannot be correct. There's no oh, way. They, they play the Titans. There they are. They're on Monday night. There's two Monday night games. So I apologize. Oh, they both have Monday nights? No, the Falcons The Falcons and the Rams, oh, play, okay. um, they, they play on Sunday. The Vikings and Eagles and then the Titans and Bills, they play Monday night games. I meant like there's two sets of Monday night games. No, yeah. I, I would say Bills, That you go from Thursday night to Monday, Monday night, so extremely long week, and then you have a short week. We'll get into that, that, we'll into that next that. week. The we'll Bills, that. that sucks ass. That sucks ass for the Bills. I'd be pissed. I mean, hey, at least. You don't want Monday night after Thursday night? That's like the worst week to have your Monday night. You already have a long break. Monday, you get another day off anyway. You, you don't need 11 days. You, you don't want that. Yeah, okay, that's fair. That's what I'm thinking. 
Um, all right. I, I know we've talked about this and obviously, um, for all of you viewers and listeners at home, uh, or in at work or in the bathroom or wherever you like to listen, uh, and yeah, we don't judge where you like to listen to us, listen to us wherever maybe actually on an listen airplane to us right now. literally all the time. Maybe you're on an airplane right now. Maybe, maybe you're that's driving a tell submarine. That's it. Like I've never, I haven't really been on many planes since COVID happened, but I think I may eh, podcast podcast on a plane. Huh. I've never, I've never done. It is an interesting I bet it's podcast. A great idea, ours, I mean, it's a great idea. I, we I bet it's we a should great invest idea. in a plane podcast. Like that should be our, our next big thing is we're we specifically designed for plane, for rides. plane riders. <laughs> we are the next big, the big podcast, the plane. Well, while we're on this uh, topic of planes, uh, why don't we just transition into the uh, Jets game versus the Ravens <laughs> where Joe Flacco will be starting for the Jets taking on his old team in the Baltimore Ravens, coming to New York. Uh, so uh, first things first, I, I'm still picking Baltimore to win this game. Yeah, I just love the storylines. I love the storylines for this, though. Flacco going up against his old team. Um, this isn't a, predi a prediction for this game, but more so for the short-term outlook for the Jets and specifically one player on the Jets that I uh, happen to like a lot. Uh, Zach Wilson apparently is out until week four. I think like week oh, four is either the earliest. Something. Yeah, I think week four is either the earliest he could return or the last week where he's out. Regardless, uh, Zach Wilson being out for these first uh, few weeks of the season is the best thing that could happen for Garrett Wilson's career. Okay, Garrett Wilson might actually get catchable balls thrown to him for his first four games this season, and I just had a feeling if Zach Wilson was his quarterback. Garrett would have just taken forever to really get broken into this NFL offense. Well, it's not really much of an NFL offense, but to get broken into an offense that plays in the National Football League, <laughs> it would have taken Garrett a little more time, I think, with uh, Zach Wilson at quarterback. But I think with Joe Flacco in, I don't, I don't think this is good for the Jets overall, but for Garrett Wilson, I like this. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's all I have. Yeah, I, I was going to make some Top Gun joke referring to the Jets, but... Um, Didn't quite go over in your head as well as you thought. No, I was going to say something about Cough and Corner, something like that. Didn't really go over well, and I don't know how many people have actually seen Top Gun and understand that, because uh, it looks like you don't. So um, No, I have not seen the new Top Gun. It was great. It was a great movie. But, no, I agree with you. I think the Ravens... I mean, like, if anybody's saying, like, Ravens aren't going to win... I, I get it. You're trying to feed into like the, the Joe Flacco, like revenge game theories and stuff like that. And like, I do the same thing, but I mean, it's not possible. If this was maybe the middle of the season, Lamar's taking a little poopy break during the game. Yeah. I mean, Lamar always has diarrhea. So, I mean, awesome. that's, that's one awesome. of the funniest things in the NFL, Lamar, <laughs> the diarrhea game, like twice a year yeah, where he just has to shit his pants the whole game. Grace McSorley came to play that game though. People forget what what does Lamar eat before those two get like does he just dude, have Chipotle might, twice a year might, and it's like might. why dude why dude, he just chugs the red salsa from Chipotle that's I don't know like that's so of course Lamar Jackson too like there spicy no other quarterback would it be funnier than Lamar Jackson having to shit his pants spicy chicken sandwich from Chick Fil A uh okay but, but okay here this is what I was gonna say <laughs> Ravens are gonna win that game. Um, in general, Grant and I have made selections for every single game. Uh, yeah, I, we're not gonna go. Well, I mean, not gonna I go quickly. List them all. We don't need a preview. We, I can we just can, say we can close. We can close with that. We'll close with that. Yeah, we we'll close. Say, with that. We can just say like who we think is gonna win, right? So we have our games of the week, and we're going to keep track throughout the season of who gets the most games correct. Yeah, we're we're gonna keep like a a competition between me and Everett the whole year. Who's the better game? Picker. And we we can update week by week. Uh, the winner um, just gets pride. Yeah, it's pure on pride. Maybe you get like three minutes to just shit on the other person. I'll give you a, every episode for I'll the winner of the week or something. I don't know. I'll give you a Barnes and Nobles gift card. I know. Uh, how much I won't be using that, but uh, love you books, man. Can give it to me so I can then give that to someone else as <laughs> it's a, a re-gift. <laughs> um, 
which is also the most asshole move of all time, regifting things no. that people give to you. Yeah, something you see, I will never what, do. What really would be the prize is if I gifted you like an actual editing software, but it's not happening. Yeah, that, that will never happen. Um, uh, okay, so here here are my games of the week. And you can you don't you, you want to keep the pride in being the better editor than me, so you, you'll never you'll never help me out on that. But okay. um, here are my games of the week. You can agree or disagree with me, depending okay. for if they're the games of the week, whatever, and then you can go through yours. My games of the week: Packers Vikings course yeah obviously uh browns panthers yeah uh uh-huh i got that one circled Um, raiders chargers yep Mm -hmm. and then broncos and seahawks yeah i got broncos and seahawks too uh that's also another return revenge game the one bubble russ goes back to seattle week one the one bubble game that i wanted to put out there is chiefs cardinals just to see how the chiefs are going to be this year um but i I, yeah nearly qualifies Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, some other games I, re- I want to keep an eye on. I had Chiefs Cardinals in there, and then I had uh, Bucks Cowboys in there, Sunday night football. Yeah. I'm very right, so- interested to see how that goes. So, uh, let me yeah. just run through this list real quick about like my games of the week. I, I say, do you want to end off with uh, Vikings and Chargers? Yeah, we can, we can end up. Well, that's what we'll end up with. Uh, okay, I, I, I kind of want to do uh, while we're on the topic of return games. Uh, Denver and Seattle. I know it's the okay. Monday night. Yeah, we can start with that order, but uh, of course the NFL, they're the goats at marketing. They Roger Goodell, although we all hate him, he knows what he's doing, at least That's when it comes to one. scheduling, at least when it comes to scheduling and getting the eyes on, uh, on the product, he knows what he's doing. So of course, Russ goes back to Seattle week one, Monday night football with the whole world watching, of course. Uh, so this year, I'm not very high on Denver. I think Denver, uh, I think the AFC best is stacked, but I just think one of those teams is bound to not go 500 or sub 500, and I think it's going to be the Broncos. Uh, but I still think they're going to kick the living shit out of Seattle. Seattle might be like the most pathetic franchise I've ever followed in the history of my life. It, it's so pathetic. I've said this a million times, but Pete Carroll picks Russell Wilson over the Legion of Boom. Then he proceeds to do absolutely nothing to help Russell Wilson and the offense out for the rest of that tenure. I don't, I don't know what their plan was, uh, but if anything, Pete Carroll deserves to get his shit smacked in by Russell Wilson on Monday. Look, I, I mean, I feel like there's no other it's way just for us. There is no other way to take a dump on someone for royally screwing over your franchise like Russ has the ability to right now with Pete Carroll. It's. And Wait, it's not it's not screwing up the franchise. No, 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 Pete. And yeah. it's not, it's not necessarily that Pete like screwed Pete some special screwed moment. over like Russ because he chose Russ over the Legion of Moon, who's paying Russ, right? All that stuff. But the fact that he never improved the team, that he lost all these key pieces, which are kind of necessary to win, screwed Russ over, screwed over the the the, the Seahawks franchise. And Russ coming back in can do exactly what Earl Thomas has dreamed of ever since he got carted off the field, flipping Pete Carroll off. Murdering Pete Carroll on national television on the 50-yard line. (laughs) Yeah. That's kind of – I don't want to spend too much time on this because I think this may turn into a very long segment of me just ranting on Pete Carroll. But, yeah, I'm going to have – a lot of pride watching Russell Wilson smack the ever living shit out of Pete Carroll. I'm gonna enjoy that a lot. Um, he deserves it. Uh, let's do Browns Carolina Baker. Oh, okay, another another revenge game. game. God damn it! By the How way, by the way, by the way, and we'll get to it. Vikings Packers is also a revenge game, and I'll explain why later. I'll okay, it. okay, we'll get we will get it. You could say Chargers Raiders is a revenge game with Khalil Mack in a way. <laughs> yeah but it's also not like the last no season. i know i know but yeah uh okay browns carolina uh i want to go first on this one yeah you got it if deshaun watson was playing in this game give me the panthers but because he's not give me the browns and you may think i'm stupid for that you may be like what what the hell are you saying oh yeah oh that's exactly what i'm thinking browns and actually, you, you rebuttal. What do you think about that? I'm, I'm not rebuttaling. I actually agree with you. I picked the Browns to win this game. And the reason why I say that is not, not because Baker, I, I think Baker Mayfield's going to crap the bet. I actually think he's going to 
blow the shit out of the Browns. They're, he's going he's gonna to make the Browns shit themselves. I just think that overall, if you're looking between Matt Rule, Kevin Stefanski, Kevin Stefanski is a much better coach. Browns have a much better defense. Offense, Jacoby Brissett's not terrible. He started for the Colts. He's not bad. I, I, I think Jacoby Brissett as a fill-in guy, well, I guess he's not really a fill-in guy this year. He's, he's the guy pretty much. Uh, yeah. But I, I just – give me that Browns defense. Just give me that Browns defense. Shut down McCaffrey. Uh, you can run Denzel Ward on DJ Moore. Uh, Miles Garrett, get that pass rush. I think that there are two ways that this game this game goes. Either Baker also, may Brown just need to run the ball, bro. I mean, <laughs> like... there are there are two ways this game goes. Either Baker Mayfield lights it up and murders the Browns defense, or he throws five picks and gets benched halfway through the game. I yeah, I I no other. I don't think other. this will be a close game. I think this is going to be a blowout, either in favor of the Browns or the Panthers. I'm leaning more towards the Browns because I can see Baylor or Baylor Baker getting a little too emotionally you involved in this. You need to get like some classes on speaking. When I just when I'm just free flowing, I just misspeak all the time. Clem- Clemson. Clemson. I'll be honest. That probably I is don't why that blew up though. I don't remember saying Clemson. It may have it it looked to me like it was cut a little way, but I swear to God, if I didn't say Clemson, that clip would not have done well. It's at like 50k right now. So- and I'm getting roasted for it, but I don't really get whenever a shit we whenever we after you watch that Clemson offense, you're kind of sitting there like, wait a second, maybe the, maybe this guy sucks dick. <laughs> maybe maybe he actually was right. Like, like here, here's Clemson. The we 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 don't reader brand sweeter. We we whenever we accidentally mess something up, either either if it's me, it does better. Reading or you not pronouncing something correctly, it does better. And it's not like we purposely did that. We we just were idiots. The, the Clemson and also like I was getting roasted for how I pronounce DJ Uyungale. I'm pretty sure it's DJ Uyungale. I think I said Uyungale. Uyungale, or whatever the fuck. I have over the weekend. I heard countless people saying DJ Uyungale how I was saying it, and I was like, "That's wrong, Washington. right? That, that's wrong, right? That's not." Cr- like, are they also, fu- or did I just fuck up? No, you're, you're wrong. I know I'm wrong, but other people are also, like, I don't, I think there may be 8, 8% of college football fans who actually know how to pronounce it. I mean, it's the same way with Giannis. Like, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I just say Giannis. I'm not even going to try. Literally That's still to this day. That's but, okay. That's, That's what we got. I- All right. Weird, okay. lo- weird logic, but I like Browns there. Yeah, okay. No, I agree with that. Before we get into the, okay, real quick. Chiefs, Cardinals. Um, Cardinals. I am also picking Cardinals because it's week one Cardinals. God damn it. We have the same. <laughs> Let's just get it. I also have week one Cardinals. I'm God replaying. I'm replaying. To, to clarify, by the way, I made all of my picks about 25 minutes ago after Grant told me he completed his picks. So these are completely un. So I, made, I, I, I'm, I woke up this morning and to like, while I was eating breakfast, I, I was just going through the game. So I was bored, but like. Yeah, I was God in my stats it. class. We might we might have some similars. Okay. I was okay. in my stats class and I did this. I give me the Cardinals over Chiefs. I know D Hop's out. Last year, D Hop played one quarter of the first half for like the whole year, and the Cardinals still went like seven and zero to start the year. Like, didn't the Cardinals go like seven and zero to start the year or something? Ridiculous. I think it was last year. Was yeah, I think like I said last ago. Or something. So I think last season I said they started off seven and zero and they imploded because remember yeah, the, yeah. the graphic for yeah Clint? yeah but. First half Cardinals are phenomenal, and first half Kyler Murray in fantasy is like even better. Uh, it's just when Call of Duty comes out, that's when he falls off a cliff. But uh, oh, also, I saw I heard I didn't see this, I heard there was another thing saying that another big indicator of when Kyler performs worse is when it's a double XP weekend in Call of Duty. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, there's no way that Kyler still gives a shit. So about I have a question, XP actually. Like, I actually have a question. The Call of Duty. I have a question. The Call of Duty uh, beta comes out here in like a week and a half. Does that count? I'm gonna I'm gonna pick the. I other, think that counts. I'm gonna pick the other team. Yeah, no, no, that one. No, literally, I'm counts. gonna pick the other team. Whoever the Cardinals play, I'm picking because Kyler's gonna write that down. Like, actually, I'm gonna clip. Like, let's clip that. 
like honestly, like when the Call of Duty beta comes out, I think it comes out in like a week. Let's see. Or two. Call of Duty. Uh, oh yeah. Let's Chuck look. that week up. Wait, let, let me see the card. I'm looking at it. The the Call of Duty beta comes out Thursday, September 22nd. So let's see what what week that puts us in in the season. You keep going. Wait, wait, I I got it. I got it. I got the it. Rams. It's the Rams. Oh, throw it, it, the house on the. Rams. And it's that weekend. It is that weekend. Throw the, the house on the Rams. Week three, at Arizona. Also, throw the house also, on the Rams. It's at home, which means Kyler is at home. It will have more free time. More free time exactly. to go. Exactly. Exactly. God damn it, Everett. You're that. right. You're right. Week three, mark that shit down. Call of Duty beta is out, and it's a home game. You know Kyler will not be uh, fulfilling his four-hour uh, film requirement that week. Uh, <laughs> yeah, shock that one up for the Rams. But for this week one game, though, give me the Cardinals over Chiefs. Give me the Cardinals. Uh, and it, also, Chiefs got uh, – She's got my boys Chargers week two. So, I mean, she's might be off to an 0 2 start this season. We'll see. I, I, I mean, start. I wouldn't be surprised. I also think people are kind of starting to underrate them, including myself, on um, like just their, their team. Like, he, they're still, they still have Patrick Mahomes. Like, they're yeah. not going to royally. Yeah, Travis suck. Kelsey. They're not going to royally. Suck. Like, are they going to be as good as the last couple seasons? No. Will they ever? Probably not. Yeah. But, I mean, Juju Smith-Schuster, if he's not doing TikToks with Jackson Mahomes, is not a bad receiver. Marquez, it's not great, but, I mean, he's not bad. He's not terrible. Sky Moore, I mean, he's wearing number 24, so he probably sucks, but that's fine. <laughs> Wait, 24 for receiver? He's wearing number 24. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. So he probably sucks. That's interesting but okay all right in college uh, in college i understand in the nfl why would you ever do that receivers yourself? still don't wear numbers in the 20s like no, ever. they can't yeah that, well in college even so. in college that's just not a thing like you can but that's just not a thing like you know a receiver's cold if they have any single digit numbers or anything in like the teens or it's randy moss and it's 80 well no it, it used to always just be like teens 80s nfl but like no, I know, but but I'm now, saying like, like even in college, it's always like you're either like, like a in the NFL, digit or in the you're NFL like right 10. now, right in the NFL right now, you know a wide receiver is going to be good if it's single digits. Yeah, no, no, if, a if number in the teens, digit, you're like, a number in the teens, eighty-one or eighty-four. Any other number? Is eighty-eight. Not, eighty-eight is a number. I, for if you're on the Cowboys, only <laughs> if you're on the Cowboys, <laughs> only if you're on the Cowboys. But yeah, I mean, there's certain numbers that I just love. But 88 like, is pretty cool, though. I'm not 88 is pretty. 88 cool. looks good. Like looks that's cool. all I'll give it. Actually, but... 88 looks cool, but only on certain teams. And the teams that looks good on, they play good. If it doesn't look good, there's just that symmetric, like yeah. symmetry. Like with the, the Bucks. Double if if, if nice. 88 was on the Bucks, I know that it's going to be trash because 88 in the Bucks numbers does not look good. Yeah, because well, yeah, it, I would say when it's the block. Yeah, if it's uh, lock, lock concept, numbers. It's lock, I just hit my, my kind of like kind of not this. You see how it's ADA wouldn't look bad in that though. But you see how it's sharp right here. Yeah. Like but that's what I don't like. like. Yeah, the ADA in there is kind of like this. But okay, I think we're spending too much time on this. We don't have much. Okay, last game yeah. before we get into our games. Bucks, Cowboys. Who do you got taking this game, Everett? Bucks. Cowboys. Okay, got a disagreement. Finally, why do you think? All right. Bucks? Let me let me explain my point. First and foremost. The Cowboys' offensive line is absolutely astronomically deplorable this year. Especially, no, I agree. They lose Tyron especially, Smith. Especially in comparison to the last couple of years. Now, yes, they signed Jason Peters, but he has about a week to get up to speed on it. And the first first team <laughs> that he's playing against is going to be the Bucks. Now, I know that their off- or their defensive line of the Bucks is not one of the best in the league, but it still is pretty good. You have to go against What do you the- mean? Yeah, it is. Oh, I guess they have Shaquille Barrett. I forgot about Shaquille Shaq Barrett. Shaq Barrett, Vita Vea. Bro, they well, real. I meant, I, real I meant more so. I meant more so. Like I'm thinking about the teams that have signed people this off season. Like the Bucks didn't really do anything to change it. But right. they've all the, they I, lost, I, I, they lost to the Dominican Sue. But yeah, so 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 Jason Peters, his first his first thing. He's he's also really old. His his first test is going to be against Shaq Barrett and or Vita Vea. So that's an important thing. I think Zeke kind of is washed. He's not even the best running back on his team anymore. I, I'm Unfortunately, sorry. Unfortunately, I agree. But that's true. <laughs> now, yes, CD Lamb is going to be good, but Michael Gallup 
is out with a torn ACL for at least the next couple of weeks. I don't know who their third string receiver is, who's now going to be the second string. But because of that, because their defense, like obviously Micah Parsons is good, but Micah Parsons, Demarcus Lawrence can really only take you so far. Trayvon Diggs absolutely sucks. Monster, mega, mega dick. Not disagreeing with you on that one either. So I just think if you look at that, and then we're putting in the favor of Tom Brady, Mike Evans, Julio Jones, Chris Godwin, Lenny, their defense is gross. I, I was, re- I'm also, great, I, I was but... reading up. I think I'm, I think, uh, I think they said Chris Godwin will be playing week one. Mm-hmm. I think they said that. Yeah. Uh, also, they also they uh, have, um, they have, they have the wide receiver three from the Falcons last year. Gage. Yeah. Russell Gage. No, yeah, I, I think th- this is what I'm thinking about the box. So, uh, they got a rookie left guard this year. Uh, rookie left guard. Oh, damn. The Bucks signed Akeem Hicks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I forgot about that. What the fuck? <laughs> you, still want, you still want the Cowboys? You still want the Cowboys? Okay. You got to stick with it, man. Everything on earth is telling me to pick the bucks here. So I'm picking the Cowboys. <laughs> what I'm were you, what was, myself. Your, what was your original argument supposed to be for the Cowboys? So no, originally my, my thinking was week one Cowboys at home, J world Sunday night football. I just don't, I just, I see the Cowboys just somehow winning this game last year. I think the Cowboys also had uh Sunday night week one primetime matchup against like a good team. And they won that also, I think. I could be wrong. We well, yeah, also keep in mind is there's not enough time for, for everybody to figure out Kellen Moore's offense by week four. So week one last year kind of gave him that green, like that zone. But this year, I don't know if it's going to be the same either. Are you saying other defenses to figure yeah. out? Okay. Yeah, I, I can, I can, I can get that point. I can see that reasoning. I, I honestly, I was going to pick the bucks for this game. And I just thought to myself, I'm way too confident in the Bucks on taking the Cowboys. Um, that, I'm I, it was cap more on so, that. It was more so a fade myself logic. I'm calling cap liter- on that. No, no, no. I, I'll be honest. I literally, my first thought this morning when I saw this, I was like, obviously this is going to be the Bucks." I mean, you and were I pretty, was going through you were pretty my set in stone on the Cowboys before I started arguing. So I'm just, I'm. No, I, I'm, no, no, no. That's what I'm saying. I made my switch over to the Cowboys this morning already. I was saying before we spoke, Four hours ago when I looked at this, my initial thought was Bucks 100%. Then I switched to Cowboys because immediately I was just like, Tom Brady offseason, not playing. That didn't really factor into my decision. Actually, Tom Brady not playing this offseason Might be made better. me want to pick the Bucks more. <laughs> Might be better. Uh, but also, here's also, the thing. Also, Tom Brady, this is not Tom confirmed, Brady. but apparently Tom Brady and Giselle We're have fighting. been going through some fights. Yeah. And allegedly Giselle like went to Costa Rica – just left Tom like just randomly while they were on vacation. Uh, if Tom Brady's playing pissed this year, also, also, if he's I'm playing, even more if, confident in my Tampa he's playing Bay Super pissed Bowl and pick. knows that, so he unretired and that's apparently why they're fighting, right? Because he unretired, he was supposed to spend time with his oh, family. Oh, if Giselle didn't want if he's that, was it? Playing, if he, yeah, if he's playing pissed off and also playing knowing that no matter what, he's gonna have to retire at the end of this season. Also, it makes I mean, a lot of sense why Brady was so pissed in that press conference the other day when they were like, why do you miss 11 days of camp? He's like, I'm 45, man. I got shit going on. Yeah. Uh, when your billionaire supermodel wife is beefing with you, yeah, there may be something a little more important than football. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the cornerstones go uh, family and football. So, I like, I, on, I, I'll be honest, like, Reading, reading the fucking Bucks thing that they just casually caught to keep hits does not make me feel great. But I'm gonna die on this hill. I'm staying on the Cowboys. Yeah, Zach Martin is the only return. I really don't have any positive reason why, other than it's just too good to be true that the Bucks come out and shit on the Cowboys week one in my eyes. Just too many things. Yeah. Are telling All right, me let's let's uh let's get into Chargers and Vikings here in a second. My computer is also at 21, percent so the timeline also. 
So we'll be cutting out the fancy football bit. Okay, I want you to no, start we can, off. We can still do that. I just you you uh, gotta go to you gotta go in like ten minutes. I, I know. I that's what I'm saying. But we gotta go over this fight. Okay. Uh, Raiders Chargers. I just have a quick little thing. Uh, I'm gonna pick the Chargers to win every single game this year. I'm just gonna do that no matter what. Uh, but I'm really concerned this week. Uh, so JC Jackson ruled out. Uh apparently he's only out for one or one or two weeks i kind of feel like he may be out for like eight weeks i i just kind of have a feeling that what what is injured he had a surgery on i think it was his foot like two three weeks ago to clean up something that was nagging him but um apparently he didn't need to have to play which that makes no sense to me. He seems like he might be out for a while. That's just a little fishy to me. I don't know. I yeah. mean, I'm no foot I, doctor, I, but I I think I I agree with you. I think the Chargers are going to win. I think it's going to be a very close game, but I think also since they lost to the Raiders in the end of last season when they could have tied, a little extra motivation. Yeah. I'm also I'm also well, a little bit on board with that. One Brandon Staley's just an idiot, but two um it's extra motivation, especially for Justin Herbert, who single-handedly got them into that position. I think that it's just mo- more motivation to slice the dice. Yes, they do have Chandler Jones now. Yes, they do have Devontae Adams now. But the cha- uh, the Chargers, Khalil Mack, Joey Bosa, uh, you guys have Asante Samuel Jr. too. He's not a bad corner. He's actually pretty good. Derwin James is coming My back after one a year hiatus. Yeah, James back. They also signed Bryce Callahan to play nickel for them. Bryce, is, uh, Bryce isn't Broncos. bad. He's a little old, but he's I not bad. He, I, I, I think he's going to be a very important part of the defense this year. This is my problem. With no J.C. Jackson, I think Asante Samuel is tasked with guarding Devontae Adams. That's not That's not good, but also... Oh, that's not good at all. But also, <laughs> I, do, I, I do see, like, safeties can help. If you're putting a lot of pressure, Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa, you might have not might not have time to get it to Devontae. Yeah, no, no, exactly. I, but I also think... the, the big thing that I want to state is if yeah. the Vikings, I mean, obviously Devontae Adams absolutely slices and dices the Vikings when he was on the Packers, but the Vikings can beat the Packers with Patrick Peterson and old Patrick Peterson and Cameron Dantzler as their corners are going against Devontae Adams. I think that the Chargers still can deal with it. Uh, another thing, uh, that I, I just realized. So uh, the Raiders, they cut their first round tackle, Alex Leatherwood, a uh, couple, yeah. I think last week or maybe That's a couple days ago. The Bears picked him up. Uh, I, regardless, regardless of that, their new right tackle, it's either this guy, Jermaine Illuminor, who I've never heard of. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was, or he was or right. it is former Ohio State tackle who was uh, moved to guard because he was beat out by a true sophomore who was a better tackle than him. So they let him play tackle and said they moved Thayer to guard and Thayer may have to start at right tackle against Joey Bosa this Sunday. He worked against him in practice, didn't he? No, they did not. They would never, never over- they both went to Ohio state, but Joey Bosa was in the NFL before that guy stepped on campus at Ohio state. So that's the age gap. And if he has to block Bosa, Oh God. Oh, Jesus Christ. My man. I, I think another thing about this game, like I now that I remember the Raiders had a horrible running game last year, or but the Chargers had like the worst run defense in the NFL. They significantly improve it this year. I think the Raiders passing game is gonna be open in this game with Asante on Devante, but shut down that run, boys. Shut down that run. I want to see a Chargers run defense for the first time in years since my boy Merriman was on the team. I want to see a run defense for my bolts. Uh, hey man, don't forget junior Sayo. Pretty good. No, yeah. Junior Sayo as well. I, I want to see a stout run defense. And I think that's the key to victory for the chargers. No, look, I, Josh Jacobs also, by the way, I hate to say it. Dude kind of sucks. Um, I, I think he overperforms for how horrible his O-line is. Yeah. I think that that's fair, but I also think that, you shouldn't be having your backup running backs taken to your snaps if you're that good of an NFL player. Who is Josh Jacobs' backup? Like last year, he had. Uh, I'll be honest, I wasn't watching. 
Kenyon Drake was getting into his snaps. Oh yeah, Kenyon Booker, something like yeah, that, was yeah. taking his snaps this year. I think Zamir White's going to take into his snaps. Like he really shouldn't be doing that. And I think that's the same thing goes with Zeke. Like if Zeke was really that I good, Tony Zamir low key taking over at some point. Yeah, no, I could too. But I think the same thing goes with Zeke. No, like if it. if you're like Tony Pollard, shouldn't be taking in your snaps. You're really that good of a running back. So that's just my opinion. No, yeah, yeah. Overall, though, I'm gonna. Yo, Chargers, I'm going to be honest, I'm very concerned about this game. It's going to be a close game. It's going to be a close game. That makes this very Um, different. Okay. I think with JC Jackson, though, that Chargers team on paper is disgusting. But that's all I got to say. Let's get into Vikings. All right. Vikings, Packers. I said earlier that this was a revenge game. Okay. Please elaborate. I do not know how. Zadarius Smith. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Linebacker, outside linebacker for the Vikings. uh, Previously played with the Packers. He stated that as of yesterday, the sole reason he signed with the Vikings, and this is it's kind of Packers, please tell me this, but to play against the Packers twice a year. He stated that the Packers treated him very poorly, which and, is true. And he is excited to get to beat the crap out of Aaron Rodgers on Sunday. Okay. Real quick, so, I'm going to look up the first, Packers depth chart. Keep going. First things first, Packers are most likely going to be out without Alan Lazard this, um, this, this week. That's what it sounded like. Okay. So they're already down a receiver. I think Romeo Dubes is going to be the one. Uh, that's my opinion. I think that's going to, he's going to end up being the true one by the end yeah, of the season. Uh, according Christian to their Watson, thing, it would say but... Romeo would be playing X, uh, yes. Sammy Chris... Z, Randall Cobb at slot. You always got to be afraid of Sammy Watkins a little bit. It's week one. He always mm-hmm. goes off week one. But um, look, the big thing is Vikings have refortified their offensive line. The defensive line for the Packers, they're starting a rookie linebacker. The defensive front, okay, they have Kenny Clark. They have De- De- DeAndre Campbell, I think, but he's an inside linebacker. I don't really know who they have out on the outside. Wait, say not, it again for, for the for, uh, for the Packers, Packers D-line. I don't really know how they ha- who they have. Okay, on. so on D-line, they got uh, Dean Lowry, Kenny Clark, Jaron Reed, and then Preston Smith and Devondre Campbell on the edge. So I thought De- um, De- Devondre Campbell. Oh, oh no, 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 not Devondre. Preston Smith and uh, Rashawn Gary. Misspoke. There. So Rashawn Gary is a little scary. Um, but look, Brian, o- Brian O'Neill, I think, is one of the best t- tackles in the league, and I will stand by that. I don't think that he gets enough credit that he deserves. Uh, Madden absolutely kind of craps on him year in year out but i think he's one of the brandon best. neal is that what you said brandon brian o'neal brian brian, brian o'neal. o'neal on the vikings yeah he's the right tackle left tackle is christian darisaw who's got trent william uh williams is darisaw the second year yeah okay. he's got trent williams comparison i'm really not as concerned this year about the outside as i was last year so your thoughts on ed ingram new ed right ingram guard, is ed ingram ingram a strong. right guard a rookie from lsu he beat out three veterans this offseason to win that position Dude is a mauler. He's absolutely gross. Multiple pancakes in the preseason. I don't know how many pressures he allowed in the preseason, but he played several snaps, several games, and never really like gave up. Like he he earned that spot. And I I have faith in him. I'm actually very excited for him. The the one spot on the offensive line that I'm a little concerned right now is Garrett Bradbury at center versus Kenny Clark might be a problem. Uh Ezra Cleveland, second year. Maybe he's a third year. I think he's second year. Um, just because out of all the other places, I think that might be the second weakest link. But the big thing is Kenny Clark versus mm-hmm. Garrett Bradbury. Let's get away from the D line, right? Let's go in the secondary. Yeah. Jair Alexander, obviously good. Yeah. Eric Stokes is average. He's not terrible. Uh, so th- this one, what do you think? Uh, how do you think the Vikings are going to try to cover this? Do you think it'll be uh, Jair on Thielen and then a double on uh, Jettas? No, I think Jair has the is very egotistical. I think that he's going to want to take Justin Jefferson one-on-one. But do you think the Packers will want to move Jair to slot or nickel to defend I think, that? I think, I don't know if Jair's, I don't know if Jair's one of those corners who sticks to one like side. Like Jalen goes everywhere. Like know Jalen J- and Lattimore, I, I honestly think are the only two guys who will literally line up wherever the fuck the receiver is. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if Jair, if, if, if if Jair like Gilmore takes down one yeah. side, like that's Jair is one of those Jackson takes down a side. If Jair is one of those corners that follows, because I honestly I don't watch enough Packers unless they're playing playing the Vikings. I don't, I don't know. If Jair follows, then I think he's gonna go wherever Justin Jefferson is. If he sticks on one side, it's gonna be probably whoever the hell's on that side. 
Well, yeah, I, and also, I mean, if he sticks on one side, like this may be the Justin Jefferson show. Who, who's who, who's the Packers nickel? Uh, I think it's Eric Stokes. Nah, Stokes is the other outside. Ra- Rasul Douglas. Oh, Rasul. Du- he's not Rasul bad. Douglas. He's, I think he's 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 guarding Justin Jefferson. He's gonna get his ass cooked. Um, yeah. Oh, also, keep keep going. I I, I I'm about to pull so, some fun stats for you. I, I I'm. I think that the, the Vikings are winning this game. I think that single handedly. I think their defense might have some problems. It's Aaron Rodgers, obviously, it might be some problems, but um, it's in. I think it really helps that it's in Minnesota. It's in Minnesota. Crowd's going to be going crazy. It's a new coach, makes the crowd go even crazier. And you could say that because it's a new coach, they're more likely to lose this game because of ineptitude, because there's non familiarity with coaching as a head coach. But I think that also plays into the Vikings' favor because Green Bay is going to have no idea what yeah Kevin uh, is going to do. I something I think about like let's say I'm the Green Bay D coordinator. Am I watching Rams? T- like, am I watching? That's what I would be doing. Tape, like I, I would t- like I'd be watching offseason take a tape of the Rams when Kevin O'Connell was calling plays. But I also would be watching the Vikings, like just basically how players run routes or what their decision making is. They, yeah, I. I, I feel like it's very, very hard to prepare uh, for teams with new coordinators. Like, now I think about it, like, it is very difficult. You, you really can't get tape on them. Uh, but, Everett, this is something that may – the first stat will make you happy. The second may concern you a little. So, first number I have for you. When the Vikings played the Packers last year, it was the first, uh, first time they met last year. It was in Minnesota. The Vikings won that game 34-31. to 31. Yeah. In that game, Justin Jefferson – uh, eight catches on 10 targets, 169 yards, and two touchdowns in their way. Right. That is one of the most hilarious stat lines I've ever heard in my life. Uh, but the second time they met last year didn't, didn't quite go as well. No, no, Packers but also let me, let me, let me explain that. Let me explain that game. Let me explain that game. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to say the stat though. Six no, catches, let me finish. 11 you know targets, playing quarterback. 58 you know yards. You know who's playing quarterback that game? It was not Kirk Cousins. Sean Mannion was playing quarterback that game. It was the exact same dude who just sailed the ball over the end zone, got his ass cut. Okay. We can, we, we can, we can throw that. So, and it also was snowing and it was in green Bay. I don't, I don't, I'm discarding that game. Okay. Okay. We can throw that one out the window. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I think, at least from a Packers perspective, just based on that Justin Jefferson game when they lost the Packers, or when they lost the Vikings, like, that's their number one priority on defense. No, Shut I, him I, down. I think uh, that, that's all, yeah. But, but here's the scary thing is, you shut down Justin Jefferson, you're leaving Adam Thielen wide open, KJ Osborne wide open, Dalvin Cook is out there somewhere, Irv Smith Jr. is out there somewhere, Jalen Rieger, if he develops hands on the Vikings, he's out there somewhere. Oh. I, I do think though, yes, that is that is correct. I think though that you're better off trying to shut down Justin Jefferson than like no, no, I agree, but limit, also I'm just saying it's not, scary. Not it's even scary limit him, but like I, I don't even know what what the fuck else. What is the other defense strategy other than shut down Justin Jefferson? You just because I mean their team is built to stop the run just by nature. Looking at it, yeah. Uh, Literally, the one concern I have on this team is their fucking nickel. That's like the one position where I'm like, what the hell on defense? Like, I, I'm looking at this defense. This thing looks fucking stacked, Everett. Like, this Packers defense looks stacked. Yeah. No, I mean, there's. I just think that there are there are going to be discrepancies. I think that their safeties are good, but they're not elite. I think that um, they're they're starting a rookie linebacker. Their corners, Jair's obviously great. That's Eric. a very big concern for me rookie linebackers especially interior linebackers yeah you're throwing them into the fire De- like devondre campbell's very good he's, he's a he played for um the gophers by the way he's from minnesota um or at least played for them but uh i just think that the, there are better defenses in the nfl and i think that one to one they do not match up with the vikings offense you really you really don't think like I, I'm gonna no, be honest. I I, if I'm going through this, if I if I think position, if I think if position, I think that the Vikings offense or one of the is gonna be one of the most prolific offenses in the NFL this year, there is no way that I'm gonna say that the Packers have an equal defense as, as that equates to. The I I get that, but I would have to firmly disagree with that. I think the Packers, their defense is like the only real great thing other than Aaron Rodgers, of course, like on their team. 
Yeah. Um, all right. So I'm going to take the Vikings in that game. I don't know if you have the Packers, but I'm taking the Vikings. I, I, I'm taking the Vikings because that okay. game in Minnesota, I think yeah. that really, really So helps. you do have to leave here in a second. So I just want to close out. Uh, close up real quick. I want to give, fantasy. I just want to say all of like who we think are going to be the winners for the game. So this, oh, yeah. Let's go this week, this. my winners are the Vikings, Saints, 49ers, Bengals, Lions, Patriots, Ravens, Jaguars, Browns, Colts, Titans, Cardinals, Chargers, Bucks, Broncos, and Bills. Did I miss the 49ers game? Who are the 49ers playing? I don't have 49ers this. are playing the Bears. Okay, so I'm taking the Niners. Okay, we'll start with that. Uh, Niners, uh, Bills, Saints, Bengals, Eagles, Dolphins, Ravens, Jags, uh, Brown or Jags, Browns, Colts, Titans, Minnesota, uh, Cardinals, Chargers, Cowboys, Broncos. So basically, we had all the same things, except, pretty similar, except for you had the Eagles, I took the Lions, and then I took the Bucks, you took the Cowboys. Were you also Jags over commies? I do have Jags oh, over. Let's go, baby. Let's go. <laughs> um, but obviously, this is a bit of a, a shorter episode. Um, we're recording this like this entire week's kind of been just in uh, a very been tough a rough scheduling, week. been a tough uh, scheduling week. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys. I don't know if you have anything else you want to say. Yeah, last thing I just want to say, uh, we didn't really get to go over fantasy football much, but I just want to say, uh, to any fantasy football owners that have Allen Robinson on your team, he was my fifth round draft pick this year. I highly, highly suggest trading him today. Uh, right now, do it. Do like, it now. like literally right now. If you have him on your team, my fifth round draft picks have a track record of tearing their ACLs or Achilles about 30 minutes before the first game kicks off. It's been going so on. For the last I would trade five that seasons. today. Literally, today. literally every single season for the last five seasons, Grant's fifth round pick has gotten injured. Either a season a ending injury or they just suck ass. It's one or the other. <laughs> so like, like, like you think we're joking, but like, this is a public service announcement. No, like for me, like the fifth round pick is where I lose the draft. Like, like I, I lose the league in the fifth round every year, and I, I'm not going to do it this year because I'm just going to trade my fifth round pick away. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching, listening. Uh, rate us five stars. Go check out our TikTok. Six stars. Uh, we're, blo- we're blowing up right now because Grant can't pronounce words. Um, and with that, make sure to listen to us on the airplane so we can become the next big airline podcast uh, wherever you go. Yeah, let's sign that deal, Delta. Come on. We'll catch you all later. Waterboys out.